she cannot be with us in Chamonix today. Good morning. Before carrying on with this round table, we are going to see the results of the Jean Ipsos survey on the GAFAMI issues with representatives of Google, Amazon, IBM. So the question was, what is the trust of European populations in GAFAMI to further develop research on the basis of databases. And we can see the figures on the screen with the position of France uh, uh, with 37% of people saying that they trust uh, the GAFAMIs. The second question in with the same type uh, of uh, answers, one fourth of uh, uh, French people trust in the capacity of GAFAMI to detect potential health problems. So this is interesting in terms of uh, prevention. Last question about confidentiality of databases. So do people trust GAFAMIs to uh, abide by confidenti confidentiality rules? And then we see that only 25% of French people a trust in uh, GAFAM is for this. Now, a small round table with uh, you to begin with, Mr. Dominique Pont, on uh, the role of the state with uh, the digital tools and the organization of digital tools. We can see, we have this in mind, this image of the wolf. Uh, maybe we need some leashes relatively flexible leashes, but we need to reassure a French population who does not necessarily trust uh, this new development. So how can we make sure that the GAFA have th their room in the, the medical landscape? Well, first of all, uh, I've got to say that health, the health system in France is a chaos. I've been uh, in the field for 20 years. Um, I have my hands on it. We are very frustrated about the situation. We are talking about uh, the armchairs or the wallpaper, but we haven't got the appropriate walls now. We don't have the appropriate equipments. We don't have uh, the appropriate systems. We have the uh, insured card, which is obsolete. All, the, all our systems are obsolete. We have to get back to the fundamentals. Uh, you don't talk about details if you don't handle the, the major things. So I think that the good model is that of city's governance, a uh, harmonious city is a city where you abide by building authorizations, you build roads and infrastructures, you don't build in individual houses, you've got to have a plan. Same thing for our health systems, you need the appropriate infrastructure. Let's get back to basics. Public authorities have to impose some basis, some foundations, and leave actors work on those solid foundations. This is the precondition to promote innovation. I love GAFA, but I will not give them the keys of my truck. Maybe they can be in the back of the truck, but they are not going to drive. This is what we have to aim, to aim for, I think. Thank you. We're going to uh, talk to the various actors. Uh, Stanislas Navchato, you're going to talk about us, to, uh, to us to, uh, about that wonderful tool, Dr. Lib, which is available for French people to make their medical appointments. And it's a wonderful tool to better articulate uh, um, hospitals and uh, doctors and patients. Well, we are here to build the houses. The state has built roads. Now we have to build houses. I totally agree with Dominique. 
we had three options five years ago. We could be doctors, or we could be researchers, or we decided that deficiency of health systems had to go on with a better organization. We had to support patients. We had to transform hospitals and health uh, establishments. So we realized that making appointments was uh, major in the health systems, but patients don't understand how to make an appointment. It, it's not clear. So we wanted to support patients and doctors so as to better plan their activities. We want to improve the access to health care. We have recruited 1,000 people in three years. We will have uh, a thousand new positions over the next 18 months. We want to use innovation within health. We need to relieve practitioners from administrative burden. They have to be able to focus on their communication with the patient. So this is why they need new tools, new communication tools. But it's not technology for the sake of it. You need people. It's got to be based on people. We have 40 million of people who are uh, who visit our site per month. 25,000 French people have an account with Dr. Lib. They make their appointments with us. We have 11 million f French people who are able to have an appointment within the next 24 hours, thanks to our platform. We give access to, patient, to patients and to doctors. Hospitals and medical centers, you know it better than, my, than myself, suffer from under-optimized organization, specifically in terms of making appointments. So I hope that many startups will be created in France with, on the basis of an, an ethical model, and they will be able to build those houses that we need with appropriate roads and bridges, so the appropriate infrastructure. Great, we have the architect, we have the workers. Maybe we need a touch of experience. Uh, in connection with uh, historical industry. I'm giving the floor to you, uh, Mr. Le Penetier. We have Mr. Emery. We have tens and tens of years of experience. We have developed medical uh, schemes. This is all based on metrology. Now, we use ever more data medicine is changing, it is ever more precise and individualized. We have always worked on the uh, human to machine interface, so we reach for some data, but we want to enhance the visibility and the comprehension around those data so that the patient as well as the, the doctor may be able to understand more precisely things. So our work is changing. When we talk about GAFA, what are we talking about? Well, it's nothing more than a media. We have metrology and data on, on the patient, and the digital only transfers such data. The GAFA is quite a different subject matter. We're talking about companies who have a business model. They collect mass data, they interpret them, and issue some trends which they sell out. So that's not representative of the world. So we will. there will not be a, third, a, a new letter with GAFA. We, you will not add the letter A to GAFA. Well, no, this industry is codified. We have a legal framework. We undergo permanent evaluations so as to evaluate the clinical benefit of what we provide. 
the GAFA are doing something altogether different. I'd like to come back to the introduction of Guy this morning. Why is it that in France there is no GAFA? Well, France is, uh, has an outstanding situation worldwide. We have to be fully aware of it. We are very lucky to have a national system, contrary to some countries where it's very fragmented and, and organized differently in the different uh, regions. Here in France, we have the CNAM, which manages all the files, all the patients' files. So uh, the GAFA in France would be the CNAM, because they deal with mass data, which can be interpreted, measured, and tracked. So this, this is uh, how I could answer this question. Yes. Yes, it, it would be the CNAM, but in real life, Stan uh, is leading things. Yes, but Stan does not have the data, uh, data on patients, on associated costs. And yes, the genuine subject is, and, and I agree with uh, Dominique in saying that the data must be managed by the state. This is the foundation and the house. Now, how do you transform the system and make it more efficient on a daily basis for doctors, for practitioners, or for patients? There you could have some GAFA, and there will probably be some GAFAs uh, in the future in France. There's a lot to be done. Uh, let's be humble enough to say that public uh, authorities store the data, and if you leave actors create digital services on ethical foundations, we will guarantee the respect of private data, data, and it is quite possible technically and financially, and this is what all GAFA, GAFA tried to do, and they tried to use that added value. In the 18th century, our country started to use printing so as to promote human rights and humanistic values. Now, we have a fascination for GAFA, but we don't step into it. So let's stop talking and let's start acting. Yes, acting is fine, but we have to do it in an appropriate way. Data belong to patients, and it's up to patients to decide what's to be done with them. You have dozens of startup coming to light, and, and they just disappear. So innovation is great, but it's got to be useful. So with respect to the use, the use of practitioners and health care centers, that's the, that's the combat that we have to be involved in. So, you know, we need to be clear about this. With respect to use, we've got to really focus on things. And I would like to invite all industrial startups and centers to think about that. In France, we've, it's one of the best countries in the world for starting a company, for launching an innovation. We don't, you know, it's not it's not revolutionary technology that is the question. The question is access to healthcare. How do you solve problems? Diabetic patients, how do you solve their problems? So I'd like to come back to the gaffers. Gaffers are about some simplicity. We all have an iPhone in our pockets. We've we give information to Apple, we give information to Google, via Huawei in China, we give information. Do you think we can recover that data, retrieve that data, because we've got the CNAM, it's a good basis, but it's very statistical, and uh, it's not doing very well. How can we retrieve all of the information, sleeping hours, the little notes that would allow us to have better prevention and greater dynamics. The gaffer, uh, the gaffers are developing applications for picking up data, but basically their business model is to integrate that data and so sell that data on again. Of course, yes, and we do it unconsciously for the moment. But coming back to your statistics, the statistics that you showed, I think it would have been interesting to ask uh, the public, the auditorium, 
you know, if we'd integrated the Ministry of Health or the CNAM or if we'd integrated uh, different industries, I think the, the, the classification would have been different. There's Sweden that has a structure already in place that expli explains the low uh, confidence rate in the gaffers, 20, 23%. Yes, I think we've got to trust ourselves as well. It's very typically French to be defeatist like this. We have means that we have loads of startups, loads of industrialists who would be happy to work on a national store and offer services. With the ecosystem that we have in France, we won't match Google, but on our scale, a bit like the small kingfisher, we will do our thing. I think we've got to trust ourselves. But we've got to be pragmatic as well. We've got to say, okay, this is the base. Uh, these are the logins. We need to have rules for interoperability. And the public authorities need to uh, make sure that all of the ecosystem in France uh, can offer this in a, a very uh, defined framework. So, so if we can put all of this in a framework, we can talk about uh, big data, artificial intelligence. Progressively, we can forget about doctors because what, what use will they serve if you've got all the, the big data? Why have a doctor? We just uh, press on a button and we'll have the diagnosis. Press on another button, we'll have the treatment. Do we need doctors still? So I'm in charge of a clinic with 120 doctors. If I tell them that they don't not need it anymore, I'll, I'd be uh, fired. No, let's stop being ridiculous. Let's treat one subject one after the other. Let's analyze each problem in relation to our culture. Let's do it step by step. The digital world, it's like um, a, a trail in the mountains. It's not a sprint. We have to do things one by one. So with respect to technology, that's the way we should be moving forward. In the 19th century, we didn't have the Eiffel Tower. Today, it's an icon. And it's not the same epoch. We have to experiment. We have to test. We have to explain, educate, reassure. And as I said earlier on, you've, what we're going to be left with is what offers value for diabetes? You might have 200 applications that come out, but how many really offer value for the patient? And then you've got uh, assessments, uh, assessing healthcare, quality of healthcare, a clinical relevance. Uh, these are great means. We've got great means of assessing all these uh, problems. Artificial intelligence, so either it's for professionals, healthcare professionals, uh, to help them with diagnosis, or it's for patients, so they don't have to go and see the doctor. I uh, had a, I exchanged with an English startup with uh, that has five hundred million euros, and they said we. Uh, so t there are sixty billion. Uh, pounds on the market today, uh, but there won't be any GPs in the future. So medicine is a very human activity. It's all about understanding patients. It's having a 360 degree vision. Yes, artificial intelligence can be a tool for doctors. Yes, we have to provide doctors with tools, with databases, with uh, data that is Pooled, but it is the doctor or the healthcare professional that takes the decision to support patients. Uh, that reflects the reality of uses today. So we mustn't be afraid. We need to invest step by step, brick by brick, and transform the situation um, in line with the way healthcare professionals work. It's just one means among others, it's just like services that might be developed or uh, what other startups might do. Now, let me reassure you. We will be asking the population. We have asked the population in Europe. The question was, what diagnosis would you trust the most? Uh, a doctor's uh, or a doctor's plus an artificial intelligence? So I think, you know, we've already made uh, some progress, but there is more progress to be made when it comes to artificial intelligence. The initial question 
if we go back to the initial question, the data shows that we will never replace the human being at the center of all that. When you have to prepare a bed before an operating theater, before you enter into the operating theater, and the nurse comes and holds your hand and says, okay, I'll see you in about an hour after the operation, you can't, that's not something you can replace. No, but we need to focus on medical time. There's a, there is pressure. And when you wait three months, four months, six months before you have access to operations, that is um, a problem. We need to invest. We need to recruit more healthcare professionals. We need to digitalize healthcare organizations. Yes, but if we can save in terms of time, save on doctor's time, if we can save uh, with respect to data integration, if we can save time in terms of the diagnosis and provide even more reliability for the diagnosis, it means that we're freeing up healthcare professionals for their human tasks. Yes, absolutely. Let's go back to the initial question, please. What are the digital tools that can be used for patients, to help patients? Let's go around the table again. What are your answers to that question? Who should we start with? Dominique. I think that the thing that's really scandalous in France is that French citizens don't have their own accounts and access to their data or access to a catalog of services. What's really missing is that. We can do things well when it comes to healthcare professionals, but we need to trust people. We need to give them empowering tools. So we need to co-build a healthcare system that reflects what they want. The, so the, the digital tool is this empowering tool. We still are not agreed about the way data should be shared. I think we have to go ahead. We have to make sure that French citizens have their own space where they can access to digital services. I think the major subject that we have to tackle, which is part of the healthcare law uh, in January 2022, it, it will apply to all uh, French people. That's the real change that we need to uh, tackle. So the shift in paradigm can only exist uh, with respect to what is useful. So coming back to patients, uh, we're talking about things that have to be useful for patients. Patients make the choices. Yes, yeah, we, uh, we understand that. But as long as we haven't proposed, proposed something, we're answering in place of patients. Everybody who's uh, started to offer digital tools, therapeutic education tools, appointment-making tools, there is a certain amount of popularity already. People want their MRI appointments online. Let's start by offering things, and then we can improve on them. Yes. Well, if patients like that, yes, of course. Now, there are two sides here. There's the service provided to patients. We need to have a, um, an e-card for health. Uh, patients have to have access to their health care, their health data. Then we need lots of services for patients. We need, they need to be able to read the healthcare offer. They need to, patients need to be able to know who they should be going to see. They need to have information, so they need to have to be able to access quickly a prevention or um, healthcare at home. And patients have to manage their own healthcare as well. There are dozens of applications to be created. The second side concerns surgeries and hospitals. Hospitals have 1% or 2% of their turnover from digital tools, 1% to 2%, which is ridiculous. It should be 30%. Uh, companies, tech companies, that we're talking about 15% to 30%, and I don't know about all I don't know whether this applies to all uh, healthcare centers, but, you know, doctors who work 50 hours a week with seven hours of admin time shouldn't be spending that much time on admin time. If they have 42 hours of work and then one third of that time is semi-administrative, they ask about the patient's history, there's no point in that. 
doctors, should have nurses, assistants, different rooms, different tools. They have to be business heads. But for them to be business heads, whether they're in a public or private uh, center, they are business heads and therefore they need digital tools to um, capitalize on their medical time. So this is what we need to transform the way they work. I think we're talking about different things. You've got uh, support for patients in, with respect to access to healthcare, monitoring, knowledge, uh, data about their health. But there's also efficiency. You know, we've got to help with efficiency. How can we make sure that patients are better treated? How can they track their progress or the efficacy of their treatment? This is another aspect, another field. So if we just provide the patients with services, we are the very example of this. When I started, everybody said, oh, yeah, set up a patient platform, invest in patients. I did this, and we got a lot of traffic. But in reality, where it's really happening is in hospitals. I've got 500 people working. I created technology, and I said, okay, we need to work this way, but maybe it's better to work this way. It really is practitioners who deliver the care. So saying that you know they're the ones that are going to be transforming is one good way to move forward. What can we say to finish? We need, there's an aligning of planets. Uh, we've got the people, we've got the technology, we've got a real vision when it comes to public powers. We've got something that's lucid, we've got an ecosystem, we've seen people who are very motivated. I think we're moving in the right direction. Thank you very much.